writer's block. You have a choice. There's two different types of writers. There's the pantsers, that's the people who sit down at the keyboard and just whatever comes into their head, they'll just write it and that works for some people who are great storytellers. And then there are the others who are the planners. But really, what is writer's block have to do with these two different types of writers? Essentially, it's this. You get in front of a keyboard and you wonder what you're going to write about today. And you scratch your head, you drink your cup of coffee, you'll do anything at all, survive any distraction, maybe even watching this video, to come up with an idea to overcome your writer's block. Now, if you stick with me today, I'm going to give you a free gift at the end of this video. So stick with me. We're going to go through several ways how you can actually solve the writer's block challenge. Let's go. Firstly, why am I qualified to teach you how to overcome writer's block? Well, I've written well over 60 books. Now, 40 of those books are on Amazon, but this gives you an idea of what I've done in the many years that I've been a writer. And this is only a fraction of what I've done. This was my very first book. It was basically a book about how to meet people, and I wrote that one. Uh, when I was quite young, but essentially it worked. And my very second book was this one, another book that was quite exciting to write, and it sold really well at seminars and also by mail order in its day. So yes, I've had quite a lot of experience. Now, just to show you that I'm not making any of this up, here is just a small portion of my overall book range. I have also quite a lot of fiction books, but they're under many different pen names. This is just a small, tiny fraction of my non-fiction book range, just to give you some kind of an idea of the books that I have written before. So there's quite a bit there. Um, you'll find details of this in the links below. So, OK, let's get into it. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is to keep research folders, and that's maybe folders either physically or keep folders on your uh, laptop or uh, on your uh, phone, whatever the case might be. But keep them handy and keep them up to date and read them before you sit down to write. It's important that you have those research there because that jogs your mind, gets you thinking, gets your... Uh, get your thought processes running. So when you sit down to write, you're ready to write. And that's the most important thing. Number two, never do research whilst you're writing. It's important that when you do your writing, that that's all you do. Just do your writing. And if you concentrate purely on the writing, then you'll have a far better chance of actually achieving it. So that's a vital thing that you need to do. Never do your research whilst writing. Just focus on the writing. Number three, never do editing while you're writing. This can probably be the biggest, hugest mistake that a lot of would-be writers fall into, and maybe even a few experienced writers fall into. The moment you go down the deep, dark hole of editing whilst you're writing, time will disappear out the window faster than you can say, Larry. And who wants to waste time like that? So, bar yourself from doing editing whilst writing. Concentrate on the writing. Number four, write with urgency and speed when at your keyboard. Now, this is extremely vital. And probably the reason why I was able to achieve writing as many as five to 7,000 words per day when writing quite a few of the books that I've already written and uploaded to Amazon Kindle. I wrote with urgency and speed in order to get the details out of my head and onto the keyboard and onto pages. And then once you've got it onto the pages, then it's easy to deal with it after that at a later stage. But the most important thing once you're doing things is to concentrate on the writing and write fast, you know, bang, 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 get things going. Move it fast. Keep up the tempo. That's what you've got to do. Urgency and speed whilst you're at your keyboard. 
editors and editing. Now, a little side note about editors and editing. This is an area where some people keep in writer's purgatory for years. I've seen some books that were written as far back as the year 2000 that weren't even released until the year 2019. That's a fact. That's an absolute fact. All because they thought the editors and editing was the most important device that they had available to them. And they were probably petrified as to what people thought about their book. But there's another side note to the whole story about editors and editing. So let's move on to that next point. Now, the whole point of your book is to get your story out there. Your customer only wants the story. They're not really into the purple prose. Admittedly, maybe a small, tiny percentage out there do want the purple prose, the fancy writing and so forth. But why they're really there, they just want the story. And if you're writing a non-fiction book, your customer only wants the book's solution, the destination. They're not there necessarily to care about your spelling and grammar, unless it's particularly, really, really <laughs> terrible. What they're there for is the solution destination. So make sure you give them that. That's why they bought the book. They want to solve a problem. They want to be taken for a ride as to where that story is going to go and how that's going to inspire them to get there as well. So that's what your book has to achieve. And why am I saying all of this? Well, only 10 to 30% of books sold ever get read fully from cover to cover. So don't get hung up on things too much. If you do, you may be catering to the wrong type of reader. <laughs> and usually you care about your book so much that you may forget that the person who buys that book isn't necessarily going to care about it at the same level that you do. They might care about it for a day or two when they've bought the book, obviously, but beyond that, they're not going to care about it that much. They may selectively read a chapter here, a chapter there, and another chapter here at the end, and get some of the special items out of the book, and then they're gone. So don't get too hung up about things too much. This is why you've got to focus on what's most important. Now, stick with me. As promised, I'm going to give you away one of my courses, totally for free. There's no strings attached. And you'll find the link details below in the description box below. So scroll down and look for it there. And here's what you're going to be looking at. Please remember to like and subscribe if you like this content. Um, if you click the like, it really helps the channel out enormously. And remember to hit the subscribe button because we love to have new subscribers. We've got lots of content like this coming out all the time and we'd love to have you on board. So this is the type of page that you'll find once you click on the link below. It looks a little bit like this. And this is the course curriculum and so forth. So there's a fair bit in there. And it's how to write your book in a weekend. So it's completely complimentary. And all you have to do is just follow the link below in the description box below this particular YouTube video. And remember to like and subscribe and join up to my YouTube channel as well. We've got lots of content like this coming out all the time. This is David Newton speaking.